Hey everybody, if you watched the last video I did on this ASRock B550 PG Velocity motherboard, you might have noticed the cool feature that it has an available M.2 slot right here for a Wi-Fi card. Well, today in this video, I'm going to go ahead and install a card that I got and show you how to do it. Uh, and instead of using the PCIe bracket that it came with, we are going to make use of the two antenna holes available so that we don't have extra clutter. Welcome to the middle of nowhere. Starting off with what you're going to need. You will need a Phillips head screwdriver and I recommend a PH1 as it has a broader head to be able to catch the screws a little bit better without stripping the teeth. Secondly, you will need an M.2 screw from the motherboard box. You might need a pair of tweezers in case any of your screws get uh, lost or dropped. And then of course we need the Wi-Fi module ourselves. This is an OKN Wi-Fi module that I got off Amazon. I was looking to get the uh, Intel version, uh, like from Intel directly. However, the version that they came with that had the antennas and the cables as well was uh, an older chipset that did not have the latest Bluetooth standard. Whereas this is rocking the Intel AX210 chip, which has Wi-Fi 6E as well as Bluetooth 5.2. And of course it comes with the antennas that you're gonna need right here, as well as the M.2 module itself with the cables that lead to the antennas two PCIe slot covers, one for short and one for regular length, some instructions, a screwdriver, a PCIe uh, slot cover screw in case you need that, and the world's cutest little driver disc. So we're not going to need the PCIe covers because we are going to make use, just put all this away, of those antenna holes that I mentioned before. And then just keep the instructions handy. So all you're gonna need from this bag is the M.2 module itself. Do be careful because if you get this version, there are there's a screw in here and some little bracket that I'm not 100% sure, sure what it's for. So we'll just put that to the side there. And the first thing we're going to do is actually go ahead and insert this module. Now, if you are rocking a ASRock motherboard, do be aware that you need a type E key for the uh, M.2 card. This is E and A, so if you have an A keyed motherboard, you can also use it. So here we have our little screw. These are super tiny. You don't need a standoff, which is cool because this is pretty low already. So we'll just screw that in first thing. And then we'll go ahead and carefully flip it over. Now for this, you're gonna to need to remove four screws. We have this top one here, these two, which is for the IO shield itself, and then this one right here. So these two are directly for the IO shroud. And then again, these two are for the shield itself. Try not to confuse or do any other screws. Uh, I've accidentally unscrewed this one many times now, and this is for the audio cover. Uh, these screws right here are for the uh, power delivery heat sink. Now you should not have to unscrew those to and take that off um, because we're not removing any wires as there is an RGB zone on the IO shroud. So there is a wire. So do be aware of that and be careful. You're gonna want to go ahead and also have a place to put your screws and try not to lose them. And then also maybe put them in the order like top to down of which they should go. Um, the two IO shield screws are pretty, are very different than the shroud screws, so do be aware of that. All right, now that we have those off, all we have to do is first, I would recommend taking the shroud off and then the shield will just drop right away. The reason I want to take both off is so you can have free access to this. So we have our two antenna holes here, and then we'll do, so we will unscrew this nut. Um, do be aware there's kind of a flat side as well, and so because the antenna holes also have a flat side, that's how that will correspond. So facing down, this is, yep, that's the top. So we'll put that in. So that'll make it a lot easier to get in. And then we're just gonna finger tight uh, this nut here onto the antenna screw. 
Do be aware there are two other little metal rings on this, so try not to lose anything. I don't, I'm pretty certain this is the correct order that, you know, just the nut part is only going on the outside. Um, the instructions, which I've already looked at before, don't really say. So again, just finger tight, that's all you need. And then we'll do the next one, which will be, yep, the lower one. And I recommend if you're going to use the antenna holes to definitely install this before you build your PC. Uh, if you do this after, you're gonna have to take things apart just because you really need that access. And there goes the aircon, which I forgot to turn off. So again, finding that flat spot to make it easier to get in, match it up. And that slides right in. Oops, oh, that's the other thing. Be very careful, these things can pop right off um, the card itself. They're able to, but you probably don't want them to. So I just did a boo-boo. This is why I also might want tweezers to get at that. You kind of wish that nut would be a little bit thicker for your fingers, but it is what it is. Okay, so let's go ahead and fix that really fast. All right, just snaps right back in. Now we have the fun part of routing our cables. So we're gonna kind of just get them down here. Because there's plenty of length, and so you are going to have excess. So just kind of make do as you can. Alright, so we're just going to do that. And so you can kind of see that they're tucked in there. And then, because this is in place, so here you have two teeth that correspond to two tabs here. So we're just going to re slide that back down. And again, you want to make sure you don't yank the IO shroud too, too tight, toughly because of that wire for the RGB. Okay, I'm just gonna flip this over. Let gravity help. We're gonna do the IO shroud first, or excuse me, IO shield. Shroud has like two little additional teeth by the screw parts that go into holes to help guide it in. So if you're not sure, we're gonna take that screw back out. All right, I think we got it. Let's try that again. We're gonna do the bottom first. Yeah. There we go. Quick tight. Again, you can't go too tight. You don't want to strip your screws. And then you can give the nuts a little twist. <laughs> so here we are. We have a little bit of give on the IO shield just because not all cases are created equal. We have our two antennas poking through the holes and you can't really see the wiring too much. It's kind of sticking up a little bit, but if you wanted to really be, you know, anal about the wiring, you could probably tuck it under here maybe if you wanted. Um, but I don't know, I don't think it will look too bad. The green PCB itself will be covered by your GP more than likely. But yeah, this is a great way to be able to add the most current Wi-Fi standard to your motherboard should you not have access to a uh, LAN cable and you need that Wi-Fi access or you need to move it somewhere around the house or wherever or take it with you to a LAN party or something if they still do those, which I think they do. If you have any questions, comments, leave them down below. You can pretty much do this with almost any Phantom Gaming motherboard. They have these slots and there's a slew of other ASRock motherboards as well that have the available M.2 slot if they don't have integrated Wi-Fi. Again, the best thing about having this M.2 slot available is that you can update the Wi-Fi as the standards improve. All right, so here I have a little makeshift test bench set up 
with the Wi-Fi uh, antennas installed and we got a system up and running. So I didn't want to just end the video with me just only installing the Wi-Fi card. I wanted to show you guys how well it performs. Um, and I can tell you from anecdotal evidence, installing Windows, updating it, downloading all the drivers. I'm sorry, there's a hotspot on the monitor. Um, doing all the things that you have to do to, you know, to initially set up a system and download everything went super fast. I am connected to an Asus, uh, I want to say, I don't remember the name of the router. I'll put it up on the screen right now, but anyway, it's an AC router. So unfortunately I won't be able to take advantage of the AX speeds, but it's still something that's good. And most people probably have, although I do need to update my router. So if you have any suggestions for a more modern router for the Wi-Fi six or whatever, uh, put them in, uh, put them down below. So anyway, uh, yeah, so it's an AC router with an AX Wi-Fi card. Uh, the uh, drivers were installed all on its own with an installation from Windows. So I'll just show you right here. So we have speed test up and running and I'm gonna swap to a screen record here in a second. But I got device manager rocking right there. So you'll see that as well. So I'm gonna go ahead and swap over to a screen record so that you guys can see the, uh, the speeds in action. So here you can see I have device manager up and running and with our network adapters, we have the Intel Wi-Fi 6E AX210 160 megahertz uh, device. And this is our Wi-Fi card. So yeah, I got it off Amazon as an off brand or whatever, like I guess seller, but the make it is still by Intel, uh, which is great. And it's using again, their AX210 chip, which does have Bluetooth 5.2. And then in our properties, which I already have popped up, you can see the same thing right here. Wi-Fi 6E, AX210, 160 megahertz. Uh, if we go to advanced, you can kind of see all the things that it offers. Um, so, and I guess you can change these. I'm not gonna touch anything, but you know, ABG, AC, AX, uh, the do it looks like it's triple band allowed, which is awesome. Uh, I don't know if it's gonna mention Bluetooth at all, but this again is Bluetooth 5.2, which is why I chose it. This was an incredibly inexpensive option to be able to incorporate Wi-Fi onto this motherboard, which is pretty sweet. Uh, so yeah, so we don't have that. As far as drivers go, they were released in 2020, which I think is kind of weird that it hasn't been updated since then, but whatever, I tried updating and it just says I have the most current. So we're recording, so let's go ahead and go to speed test. And then I also do want to say I have a I have fiber here and it is 900 down and up for speed. Um, and again, I am on my five gigahertz band of that AC router as well, or router if you're across the pond. So that's, that's really good, I think. Um, nope, don't care, go wait. I think that's pretty dang good results for being a Wi-Fi connection. Uh, let's go ahead and do it. We'll do it one more time just to see what a secondary result might be. Um, yeah, not too shabby. And then I'll go ahead and download a, uh, a driver package from NVIDIA because that's something common that people might download and again of course download speeds aren't just impacted by your internet capabilities and the devices you connect to but also of course the servers from which you're downloading so here for the secondary test it's much less um which is funny so there's i've never really had consistency to be honest when doing speed tests but whatever it is what it is so we'll download a set of drivers so that's it's roughly third less that's not great but hey at least you have something to look at uh, so we'll go to fast.com this is Netflix's site and it is a test for you to be able to I guess see how well uh, your speed is for purposes of viewing content I don't know um, I did get a 410 before so I don't know maybe it's just Wi-Fi is fickle I don't really know so we'll do one more get two in of each test So 340, okay. So there's that. So let's go ahead and download some NVIDIA drivers and just see how long this takes.
Okay, so 787 megabytes. Let's go ahead and download it. Let's see how long this takes. So that said 26 seconds at the beginning. So not too bad in my opinion. I mean, it's going pretty quick. Wonder if it'll give a time frame for the total at the end. Doubt it, but it feels like it's more than 26. There you go. So 788 megabytes downloaded in under a minute. So I mean, I think that this is a win. And for 29 or so dollars, uh, you can't lose if you can add this to your motherboard. And that's it for this Wi-Fi solution. Uh, it's pretty easy to install into the motherboard. Again, totally advise installing it before you do your build. Drivers were automatically installed when I downloaded and installed Windows. Uh, download speeds were great, as you can see from the testing and just downloading the files. Sure, maybe the megabits per second wasn't the fastest, but again, real world use, I really thought it was fast when it came to downloading all the little utilities and the drivers and whatnot for a brand new Windows build. So I'll leave a description, I'll leave a description. So I'll leave a link in the description below for the exact product that I ended up using for this. And I guess that's gonna do it for me. So thank you for coming to the middle of nowhere. Thank you for watching. Show your support for the channel by getting subscribed and click on that notifications icon so you don't miss out on any future content. Hit a thumbs up if you liked the video or found it helpful and leave any comments or questions you have down below. I'm Seth and I'll see you next time in the middle of nowhere.